Hi guys and welcome to this video tutorial on mappings where we'll be understanding what a mapping is. We'll be looking at the different types of mappings that you'll need to know and how to identify each type. And we'll also be looking at different ways that you can represent a mapping. So what is a mapping? Well, a mapping is even more general than a function. And what it does is it gives you a rule or it tells you a relationship between two sets of elements. So let's start off by looking at a one-to-one -one mapping. An example of a one-to-one -one mapping is the equation y equals x, which we can illustrate by drawing its graph. Now from the graph, you can see that this is a one-to-one -one mapping because each value of x maps to only one value of y, okay? So it cannot map to any more than one value of y. Sometimes it can be easier to think about this as inputs to outputs. So in this case, one input gives you only one output. So if you're given a graph, you can determine whether it's a one-to-one -one mapping by using what's called the horizontal line test. So what you have to do is draw some horizontal lines which go through the graph. And I generally recommend that you draw quite a few lines. And if there is only one point of intersection between the horizontal line you've just drawn and the graph, it shows that it's a one-to-one -one mapping. Another way you can show a mapping is by using a mappings diagram, which is just another visual way of showing the relationship between elements of two different sets. Okay, so here we have the set X and here we have the set Y. And this diagram shows that each element in the set X maps directly onto only one element in the set Y, hence why we would call this a one-to-one -one mapping. Another way we can represent a mapping is by using a set of ordered pairs, which is a numerical way where the first coordinate of each pair is the input and the second coordinate of a pair is the output. So for example, if we were to input a value of x is equal to 1 into this equation, we would get an output of 1. If we were to input a value of x is equal to 2 into this equation, we would get an output of y is equal to 2 and nothing else. All right. So this set of ordered pairs is an illustration of a one to one mapping. The next type of mapping we're going to look at is a many to one mapping. And an example of this type of mapping is the equation y is equal to x squared, which we can draw the graph of, as you can see. Now, from the graph, you can see that this is a many to one mapping because Many different values of x, many meaning more than one, map on to only one value of y. So we can use the equation to see how this would work with the graph. For example, if x is equal to 3, then we would get a value of y is equal to 3 squared, which is equal to 9. And the same would work if x was equal to negative 3. So this is an example of many values of x mapping to the same value of y. If you're given a graph, another way you can determine whether it's a many to one mapping is again by using the horizontal line test. So what you have to do is draw horizontal lines which go through the curve. And as before, I'd recommend you draw several different horizontal lines because the behavior of the curve changes at different values of x. So for any line that you draw, if you're able to find more than one point of intersection between the horizontal line and the curve, it shows that it's a many to one mapping. We can also use a mappings diagram to illustrate a many to one mapping. Here where we see that two different elements in the set x map to only one element in the set y. And we see the same here. Now it is possible that within a many to one mapping, you find a one to one mapping. And this would be the case when X is equal to zero. Using the equation, we would get zero squared, which is also equal to zero. So there can be a one to one mapping within a many to one mapping. 
but all you need is one instance of a many to one mapping to say that the whole mapping is a many to one mapping. You should also be able to determine this type of mapping by looking at a set of ordered pairs. So using the equation y is equal to x squared, when we substitute x is equal to negative three, we get a value of nine. When we substitute x is equal to three, we also get a value of nine. So just by these set of ordered pairs, you should be able to see that there are two different values of x, which give us the same value of y. So therefore, this is a many to one mapping. The next type of mapping is called a one to many mapping. Now, an example of this type of mapping is the equation y equals the square root of x. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with the graph, this is how it looks. Now, from the graph, you can see that this is a one to many mapping because it's possible for one value of x to map to more than one value of y. Now, in this case, one value of x can map to two different values of y. So say, for example, the value of x was equal to four. There are two different values of y which this can map to, which would be the square root of four, which is positive two and negative two. Another way you can determine whether a mapping is one to many is by using the vertical line test. So all you have to do is draw a vertical line which goes through the curve and as recommended before, draw more than one. And for any vertical line that you draw, if you're able to find more than one point of intersection, Remember the definition of many just means more than one. It shows that it's a one to many mapping. All right. Again, you can illustrate this type of mapping by using a mappings diagram, showing that one element in the set X maps onto two different elements in the set Y, as you can see in these illustrations. Let's see how a set of ordered pairs for a one to many mapping would look. Okay, so we can see as shown before, we've seen that when we input a value of x into the equation y is equal to the square root of x, we could either get y is equal to 2 or y is equal to negative 2. So what we can see from this set of ordered pairs is that the same value of x gives us different values of y and therefore this is a one-to-many mapping. Last but not least, we have a many-to-many -many mapping. Now, a many-to-many -many mapping is a combination of both a many-to-one mapping and a one-to-many mapping. A good visual way to think about this is if you were to combine both the graphs of a many-to-one and a one-to-many mapping, you'd get something that looks like a circle or an ellipse. So an example of a many-to-many -many mapping would be the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 25 which is the equation of a circle centered at the origin with a radius of five units. If you're given a graph, the easiest way to determine whether or not it's a many-to-many -many mapping is by using both the horizontal line test and the vertical line test. So what you have to do is draw a horizontal line, which goes through the curve, or the circle in this case. You'd also draw a vertical line, which goes through the circle and if you're able to show on the horizontal line that there is more than one point of intersection, but you're also able to show on the vertical line that there is more than one point of intersection, this shows that it's a many-to-many -many mapping. Looking at the mapping diagram for a many-to-many -many mapping really illustrates this combination between a many-to-one and one-to-many mapping. So here we can see that there are two elements in the set X which map to only one element in the set Y, which is a many to one mapping. And there is one element in the set X which maps to two different elements in the set Y, which is a one to many. And the combination of both make this mapping a many to many mapping. We can also see this same combination when we look at a set of ordered pairs. So you can try subbing these values into this equation, x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. And you'll see that it satisfies this equation. For example, when x is equal to three and y is equal to four, 
we get 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to 9 plus 16, which is equal to 25. And you can try it for the other pairs. But if you look at these two pairs, you can see that there are two different values of x, which give us the same value of y, which shows a many to one mapping. And looking at these two pairs, there is one value of x, which gives us two different values of y, which is where we can see a one to many mapping. So the combination of these shows that this is a many to many mapping. All right, in the next video tutorial, we'll be doing some more examples. Until then, keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.